Hi, everyone. My name is Shannon Harvey, aka Legal Fox. I'm with Miami Web Fest. And today we'll be interviewing a very amazing creator. His name's Atushi Agata, and his series is Lost and Found Cowboy. So tell us, ah, excellent. And he is he has graced us with the full garb. So thank you for that. I love we love the the visual stimulation. <laughs> so tell us a little bit. I see that you were involved with Miami Web Fest. You were one of the OGs, the original gangsters from 2015. So tell us a little bit about your experience with the fest back then. Yes, I was. Uh, thank you very much for having me today, uh, Shannon. I was um, invited to the Miami Web Fest in 2015. And I came there with the original series of Yukata Cowboy, which is Yukata is this garment that I'm wearing. It's a Japanese summer garment and cowboy uh, because I grew up both in Japan and America. And I was awarded the best uh, creative concept award for my series that I shot on my iPhone playing 20 characters myself. And um, it was very low budget. But then I started to make different spin-offs. I made uh, Mona Lisa Cowboy and then I made Lost and Found Cowboy season one. And then the pandemic hit us, and uh, that's how I ended up with Lost and Found Cowboy too. Mm, okay, so the Lost. Okay, so that was one of the original of the. Tw so you, in essence, you chose one of the twenty characters that you played and created a series from it. Yes, I basically did a. It was a cross cultural comedy about living in different places. So I basically did this whole series about funny characters that I encountered. But for myself as a host, I dressed up as you got the cowboy because this kind of visually shows that I'm cross-cultural. And then I kind of enacted the different funny encounters I had. Uh, so I'm dressed like this as a host, but when I play the different characters, I I'm dressed, you know, sometimes wearing a blonde wig or sometimes I'm, you know, uh, pretending to be an old woman, you know, with glasses kind of like on my nose and things like that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And I see that um, it, for this year's festival, it's series, uh, your season two, that's up for some awards. And if I understand correctly, that was shot during the pandemic. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So uh, with Lost and Found Cowboy season one, we were also exploring this kind of cross-cultural cross experience. And we shot it in Japan. Uh, it's about an American dancer visiting Japan and then learning about Japan and also teaching him how to dance. So we had this element of cross-culture and dance. Um, and we wanted to continue this series with different seasons in different countries, but then the pandemic hit us. And so you couldn't really travel. It was very difficult. I mean, the borders were closing. And so I thought, how can we make uh, something that you know, is uplifting, that kind of interacts with different people in different countries? And then I had this idea to, I changed the script totally and also changed the cast so that we can record remotely over Zoom. And I had met um, the cast, um, uh, Shana Del Ma and uh, Loke Charlotte Olsvig at a festival in Spain, in Bilbao. And we had wanted to work together, but uh, Loke lives in London and, and uh, Shana lives in Spain and I was in Tokyo. So on a practical level, it was very difficult. But because of the pandemic, everybody was on Zoom. So I thought maybe we can do something on Zoom. And then I also changed the storyline about everybody being isolated during Zoom, but they reach out to each other over the internet and they try to connect with each other. And that was sort of the motivation. That's how I came up with the idea for Lost and Found Cowboy 2. I see. Okay. So yeah, you touched upon my next question, which was what I saw when I was watching the episodes that it was cross, you, there was characters in different countries, I think particularly Spain and um, UK, correct? Yes. And so you found a way to do that. And as you said, it, you, it, that may not have come to fruition had it not been for the pandemic, right? Yes. So, you know, and, and not only did you make that happen, but you incorporated that um, unusual situation into the storyline without saying too much about, in case anyone hasn't seen it, um, into the storyline of the, the episode. So it turned out to be extremely motivational and, and how to overcome obstacles while everybody was in lockdown in a very, very uh, creative way. And uh, not only the typical obstacles everyone had, but, uh, 
in your particular case, in, in this uh, season, you had an additional, op a personal obstacle. And, um, and you would think in isolation, that would be more difficult. But because you were able to reach out to your friends via via Zoom, via Skype, they um, they made sure to to take care of you and actually give by them incorporating you into their projects and them have, wanting to rely on you. It gave you a bigger purpose other than the per, the personal obstacle you were going through at the time. So do you maybe want to elaborate on that or with? Yes, I mean basically. It, the idea came through in, in the first lockdown. So everybody really was locked down. And when I had this idea, I contacted uh, first Shan, uh, first Lurke and then Shanna, and they were also under lockdown. And they were frustrated because they couldn't uh, do films or they couldn't act. And so they were kind of eager to do something. And they were available also because normally it's hard to you know, coordinate everybody's schedule. And so they, were, they kind of jumped on the idea. They wanted to do it right away. And I think it would have been hard to work with somebody you didn't know, but because I had met them in uh, Bilbao at the web fest there, and I liked their, um, they had done this series called uh, Piso, which means apartment, about two roommates in Madrid. And it was very funny. The sensibility kind of matched mine and they liked my Yucata Cowboy series. And we also got along personally and we even joked around and we thought we could maybe do something together. So that made it much simpler for us to work together. And first we did a short test for like a minute and a half to see if we could really film this way. Because the other thing was unlike a regular production where you have a crew coming and shooting you, the cast themselves had to film themselves, they had to record themselves, they had to light themselves, dress themselves, dress the, uh, the set, and also send data to, to I mean, they had, to, they had even more work because they had to label the, the, the files and send them to me in Tokyo over the internet. So it, it was a lot of work for each of us but um but we managed you know and and um i i don't know if i actually answered your question but um that's sort of how it, it started and 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 also the great thing i think you asked me about the personal aspect yeah so, so what happened i don't know was, how yeah so the question was that that was that was my next question that you answered so thank you for that I'm sure that's a very interesting process to do um you know during the the pandemic that way, um, as much as you want to say about the storyline and how exactly you know the you overcame a personal obstacle with the help of your two friends, is um, you know it was uh, if you whatever information you want to give the audience about that. Oh, okay, yes. So uh, basically, the uh, the idea was that so so I wrote the characters as being in isolation, and then um, that they reach out to each other and they try to cheer them. Um, each other up and and we also managed to rehearse online because normally you do a table read together but we had to do this, this online and we kind of brainstormed so um, there were like cross-cultural aspects also play with words uh, for example Shanna had the idea when I was talking about fans that in in Spanish dancing, you use, use these fans oh I should have the fans oh I picked up on that pun, I love that pun yeah love yeah, and, and, and fan, then she, but, yeah. yes, and she suggested it, so we incorporated it in the script, and we had these these props uh, also, and and that way the the script firmed up. Also, we wanted to it to be kind of culturally iconic, and flamenco is very Spanish, and it's iconic as people. It's something people identify, and I had seen Shanna dance this in her video, so I thought we could incorporate this dance aspect. And also I had been doing like live stand-up before the um, pandemic hit. And then we switched to virtual stand-up. And I had also, when I visited London, I had gone to see a stand-up show with Loki. So I knew that she was also into this too. So that we decided to incorporate the stand-up aspect too. So stand-up, flamenco, these things, which are kind of fun and cross-cultural. We also put that into the, to the series. And, uh, and it was actually, I mean, when we were filming it, we were in lockdown. So, so we also, my our producer, Sean Evans, had the idea that we should also go out and film things outside. But as you see, like the streets in Madrid are empty. Um, Luke was almost having to, you know, she, had to, she could only go outside for one hour per day in, in London. So she had to go out and film during the one hour she had available. And there was nobody around. 
I mean, Tokyo wasn't so severely under lockdown, but I mean, there were less people outside. So we wanted to- I guess to the bright part in that is there's less background noise, right? When you're shooting and there's hardly anyone on the streets, there would yes. be less, uh, less background noise. So that would yes. be a bonus, yes. I would think, right? Yeah. Um, excellent, okay. And what would you say your your genre is? Because I watched it and it's it's so eclectic and it it could please so many different audiences. And uh, I know it's hard to classify, but if you had to kind of categorize it, what would you say? Uh, well, it's generally, I mean, it goes under the umbrella of comedy because no matter what we do, I mean, I'm what I do is all end up being comical, even if I'm trying to play a seriously role, well, people start to laugh, stop laughing. And, uh, and also I think Shanna and Luke are naturally com com comedy actors. And in some festivals, they put the series in the sketch comedy category. I, I don't know, it, it's, it kind of depends on the festival and, and how they do it. But I, I would say kind of cross-cultural comedy, a co comedy um, that's how I would kind of classify it, yeah. I see, okay. And we saw some knife wielding in the <laughs> series, uh, but that was done in a very lighthearted way. So yes, I could see the comedic aspect of that as well. Um, so was that any special skill or was that you just kind of uh, being uh, comedic and uh, playing around with the with the knife? Oh yeah, that was uh, that that was exactly what you said. That I was that was no special skill. It was just me being comedic. But actually, that really was a kitchen knife, and so it it was actually a bit dangerous. And then Shanna kept encouraging me to be more violent, and I'm like, yeah, but I mean, you know, I don't want to hurt myself. Like it's like it doesn't look really threatening. And then uh, and and Sean, my producer, actually encouraged me to edit it more like a psycho film. So I had to kind of edit it more tightly. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to be a psycho, path, you know, but. Um, that's how it ended up um, but it's quite funny and, and also I have uh, yeah I, I mean this kind of frustration of being under pandemic I kind of put that we put that in the script because you know normally you're doing, used to doing things in person and you actually have to do things online so uh, you know there are many things you can't do Okay, and so how, what was the general response to when you released the episodes and who you released them to initially and what was the response like? I think the response was quite positive because it was timely. So even people who never really watched my series, they watched it because they were curious what was done during the pandemic and, and in what way. And also the fact that it was uplifting and at the time, you're really hearing about all these like airlines, like not being able to fly and, and people not being able to go visit their, their parents or go home. So in this situation where like everybody was kind of being very nationalistic or, or forced to be, you know, kind of stay within borders, I think it was really nice that they could reach out and also they could watch it from home because it was an online series. In fact, this winter, I was supposed to have a live screening in Tokyo, the first live screen that I could, you know, I could attend and, and talk. And then because of the Omicron, it actually got switched again to an online event. But because it was an online series, people could watch it. And because it was an online series, uh, online screening, people in America also watched it. And so, um, so that was good. And, and during the past, I mean, basically, the, the series Lost and Found Cowboy is released uh, through this British comedy platform called Twisted Mirror TV. And um, so people watched it in different countries, like in Spain, India. And uh, I, I think it was quite relatable. And it was something that um, kind of made them feel good. And, you know, because we're doing something kind of clumsy and funny. Um, so I was kind of glad because that was sort of the purpose of making it. I mean, it was also making it to, for me to feel better. I mean, for us to feel better, but also to make the audience feel better. And I think that um, probably achieves that purpose to, to some degree, yeah. Yes, and it was very practical. Not only make the audience feel better as far as making them laugh and smile and be entertained, but it was motivational because uh, you, you know, like I said, you found everybody found a way to, to uh, do things that they probably wouldn't have tried to even do or special skills or get into a new hobby that turned into something more, um, you know, during that hard time and to to take something negative and, and turn it into a positive. So on top of just the mere fact of it being great and entertaining and well done and comedic, 
um, you know, as you said, it was very, very uplifting and uh, motivational. So I'm, oh, I'm definitely hoping that it, it reached a, a wide range of audience because, you know, the um, mental health during the pandemic, that's a whole other topic that we won't, you know, oh, yeah. but we, we yeah. needed more stuff like yours to be circulated during that time and still to this day, you know, so. Um, so, you, yeah, you've definitely contributed in that way. Thank so you. what would you say is next for, for your project or is it going to be um, on, similar to that or is a different take or what's what's next? Well, it's a bit hard to say because, of course, when we're doing it, we didn't know the pandemic was going to last that long. And uh, I thought that we would be showing at festivals in person uh, quite soon and we would all be able to meet up. And to this day, I still haven't seen Loke or Shana in person. And it's only just um, like in the last couple of months that I've actually been able to get back to doing things in person. So I just started to do, uh, well, I did some a bit in Tokyo in person, but, you know, even stand up, I mean, because the Omicron, like, you know, you know, again, it shut down and then I'm starting to do live like stand up and, and improv. And uh, so I'm kind of like trying to see where things are going because I mean, of course, the first season was shot completely before the pandemic. And then the second season was, you know, during the pandemic. And this adventure of Yukata Cowboy can continue, but it's kind of not sure, like, in what way and where. And still COVID is going around. So I'm kind of now exploring, but I'm also kind of, like, expanding. And so trying more live stand-up and improv. And, and hopefully these will all come together. Uh, it can take so many forms, but it's still not clear you know we have like even more disease coming and like more things so I'll, I'll have to see what what the right angle is because you know i i guess with with the with the with, with the lost and found cowboy season two it, it just kind of was a very timely thing i had the idea we had the the uh the means and uh we could go into production right away but right now because things are still kind of like <laughs> you know a bit uncertain uh, although going in a good direction, I suppose. Um, I'll have to kind of see, but but I'm actually trying different creative things and and, and do, enjoying being back to being able to do more things, you know, in person. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So last year, the, our Miami Web Fest had a good in-person turnout. I think people were were happy that there was actually something going on in, in person. And, you know, many people made it from all over the country and the world. Oh, cool. And so we're, we're happy to, you know, get, get that uh, kind of going again, you know, especially in, in Miami with the warm weather. And um, so I think it's a off to a good start and it, things are definitely, you know, progressing back to normal, but the, the normal is gonna be different now and that's good. I think we've we've learned a lot. Um, so I saw that you have a prop there with you that you've had since 2015. And I know that because I saw it on the video view in Miami Web Fest then. Can you show us your prop and its yes. purpose? <laughs> it, it, the lasso, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I actually, it's so funny because I've gone to many festivals also in Miami. And I think so many people wanted to pose with the lasso that I ended up like kind of roping them and in, in fact, I've done it so much that one time the Korean uh, festival director, Yang Man Khan, while posing with me saying, like, like, why am I, in, you know, like caught in this rope everywhere I go? <laughs> and it, it was the funniest thing. But yeah, it, it, it's actually a real lasso that cowboys can use. And everybody thinks that. Oh, I'm that's a it. real lasso. It's a real lasso. It's not just yeah. a prop. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And uh, everybody thinks I learned it from, uh, you know, to be this character. But actually, I learned it when I was, uh, I think, 15. When I first came to America, I came to America when I was 13. And I was such a fan of cowboy movies, especially Spaghetti Western. So one summer, I went to a summer camp to learn horseback riding. And I wasn't particularly good with riding horses, but they also teach you how to lasso. And I kind of loved it. So I actually learned how to do it when I was 15. And, but it's not a very useful skill in New York City. <laughs> and uh, or, or many places, especially you know, if you're not like a rancher. And so I hardly ever used that skill until I started making this series. And um, it, it made sense to kind of include this prop. And once I got this real one, you know, everybody paid even more attention to my series. So uh, one time the TSA opened my luggage and they checked and you know, there was a tag saying, you know, we checked and I wonder what they thought of it. <laughs> yes, I, 
<laughs> I'm sure because when you went through security, did, I don't know if you're dressed in costume. Did you have the cowboy hat on? You're dressed just regular, probably. So, um, and you know, often too, when TSA goes through things, it's not in person. They're not seeing the person behind it. So it probably, yeah. you know, was uh, a bit confusing. But I'm sure they've seen many more uh, bizarre objects in people's suitcases. So. Yes. And I don't know if they could determine if it was a weapon or not or what they should do, but usually <laughs> I put it inside, like deep in my suitcase. And then when I opened it one time, it was on the top and there was this kind of notice from the TSA. So it was like, <laughs> you know, just a funny thing. Yeah, definitely. OK, so if somebody wanted to find out more about your series, where uh, where can they find out and where should they go? Um, well, there's a website, lostandfoundcowboy.com. Okay. And uh, they can also find it on Twisted Mirror. I also have um, like different social media, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter for, for my series. So uh, you, you can see them all online. Um, and okay. uh, like yeah. for IG, for example, are you under Lost and Found Cowboy, Yukata Cowboy? What is, what, how are you? Oh, yes. Here? For in Instagram, I have, I have Yukata Cowboy, which is really the main one. Okay. Uh, but I have also uh, Lost and Found Cowboy on Instagram too. And right. um, so they can follow me on You Got the Cowboy probably. Um, okay. Yeah. And I saw you on Facebook as well. And then you yes. have your own website. Yes. So there's an abundance of information about, yes. about you out there. So that's excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining us today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And, um, you know, I hope uh, I wish you the best of luck and um, I'm sure you're up for some great things, you know, and, Thank and, you very much. Now, and uh, we'll see what happens. Can I get a picture together? Of course. Yes. <laughs>